Well, the, that, that guy just then, he was walking along and he said he walks this every day and he's never even known about them before. It's crazy, isn't it? Um, Imagine what's going on like right under your feet in your local patch. So, this incredible place is called Troopers Hill. Now, it's right in the middle of Bristol, and it's an area that a lot of people I know have talked about quite a lot. But I've just never had the opportunity to come here. Isaac, by the way, is the name of the guy that we're going to be meeting. And it's because of him that we're here because he suggested there may be a very interesting animal that lives here. I have no idea where he is. <laughs> there he is. Oi, oi. Say hello to the channel. Hello, channel. <laughs> Wait, what is, he, what is it we say? Good hello, day, good day, day people. <laughs> So it's your fault we're here, what are we after? Well, apparently there's in excess of 80 species of bees recorded here and like 20 something butterflies as well. Nice. So, bugs. Bugs. <laughs> But yeah. you said there's one species in particular well, that we might find. Yeah, I, I heard someone, I was looking up this morning actually about this mm. and I couldn't find any evidence on it, but I heard someone mentioning that you get bee wolves here, which is a species of solitary wasp that hunts bees. And Sick. Really cool. I think we'd be so lucky to find one based off what I've read, but there are some other interesting bee parasites that do live here as well. So Sick. Well, we can look for both. Yeah, man. See what happens. Plenty about. Right, let's get going. <laughs> Another bee, there's species two. This is a solitary wasp species, it's a digger, it's not. I don't think it's a bee. <laughs> all, all these little holes, each of them will have either a solitary bee or wasp that's dug its hole and is living inside of it. Okay, so we've just found our first bee wolf, confirmed. That one actually is, is it? Yes, it is. <laughs> It's actually, uh, oh, I was trying so hard not to say buzzing, but hey, I can't <laughs> think of any other word. I'm buzzing, man. I'm absolutely buzzing. Do you see all that? Russ has joined us from the San Martin video and is providing a very, very key piece of uh, technical assistance. Do <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm currently making the best lighting conditions possible <laughs> um, with some top quality, oh, here we go. quite expensive equipment, I have to say. Um, and it's working. I don't know if I've got that, I'm sorry, lads. Russ is basically providing flat light so that we can get the best, clearest, and best exposed images possible. And footage, mainly footage, in fact. We're actually watching. Well, actually, I think you're the expert. You explain what we're watching. What are we watching? <laughs> we're watching one of the bee wolves that we were so delighted to find excavating its hole, its nesting hole here. And then just next to it, there is a dead honeybee, which one of them obviously found and caught earlier. So basically, when, when the honeybees are feeding on a flower, the bee wolves, is horrible. They sneak up behind them, sting them in the back, and they carry them off. And it's quite amazing how well they can carry them because they're about the same size. They carry them basically hang down underneath. Looks like, you know when you see a helicopter moving like a rhino or something in Africa? <laughs> but it's just a bee. <laughs> and then they normally land on the sort of muddy excavation by their help. Sometimes they drop the bee nearby for some reason, and this one seems to have dropped this bee nearby, and is now going in and out excavating. I suppose it's making sure that it's all right inside. And then we'll, when it feels happy, and when I'm not poking at the dead bee anymore, come back and collect the bee and drop it off inside the hole. Lay its eggs on it, and then its larva will hatch and eat its dead body. Kind of minging. <laughs> Lovely, quaint British wildlife. <laughs> <laughs> As 
As it happens, I've had a particular photographic technique in mind that I wanted to experiment with for some time, which I knew bugs of any sort could be great potential test subjects for, and these bee wolf wasps were near perfect. Unfortunately though, I failed to capture even a standard shot that I was happy with, despite some expert technical assistance and top-rate encouragement. Money! <laughs> <laughs> I laughed at the end of that. <laughs> I think I might have got it. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't expecting you to go, money! <laughs> so it's been about a week since me and Isaac were here and made that really exciting discovery. So the plan is to come back now and continue to take advantage of the lucky find and hopefully improve on the shots and footage that we got last time. Now, personally, I'm quite excited because having been given some time to think about it, which is often all you need, I've come up with some ambitious <laughs> photography ideas, whether they'll actually work and whether the wasps will still be there. It's a whole nother thing. Bugger. Are they still here? No. No? No. <laughs> like, not at all. <sighs> oh man, that sucks. Because mm. when we were last here, there'd been like a week of heavy sun, didn't there? Yeah, it'd been really dry. But in the last few days, there's been a lot of rain. I mean, it's a downer. Yeah. But oh, no. it's, there's still loads here. No, we're going to get an upper out of it, don't worry. We'll get an up. I like this. I yeah. like the positivity. <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is the kind of channel Let, positivity. Yeah, find, I like it. Let's find something else cool. Have you checked higher up? Nah, I just sat down to press for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could, I was going to go up to the top and see if it's drier, upper. Upper dryer? Upper Look dryer? Upper, upper the upper. Upper dryer? Let's try the upper dryer. It's, it's a shame it's been so wet. I, I think they would come back if we had a couple more days to dry. It's supposed to be yeah. warm this week, to be fair. We might have to do an evening one. Oh, 100%. I'm, I'm willing to give it another go. Yeah. But I just, as soon as I saw the ground, I was like, it wasn't like this. You want that magic shot though, don't you? I want, I want, a, yeah, I've got a good plan for one. So as the sun was out and we knew Troopers Hill still had so much to offer, Isaac led the way in the search for our next photographic fixation, which I hoped would still allow me to try out that particular photographic technique and achieve something similar to the kinds of shots that had monopolized my daydreaming for the past week. So I've managed to find a nice little gully in which to... One takes shelter quite nicely. Ooh, some active holes. Active holes. I don't know if they're bee wolf wasps though. But anyway, as I was saying, found a nice little spot which is high enough up that oh, we should be able to set up quite nicely. And yet it's low and sheltered enough that it should attract some nice insects. Here he is. Here he is. Join us. <laughs> Put some I'll dramatic get... music to that, that'll be fine. Yeah, that'll be epic. <sighs> Welcome to this like. Oh, this is a lovely gully, isn't it? Hey? Yeah. There's one thing people say about me. They say that Matt, he's good at finding lovely gullies. To be fair, when you text me, I was like, oh yeah, that's that gully guy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that coming. <laughs> We basically found ourselves in a lovely patch of heather as the sun's going down behind us. Uh, golden light, tiny little flies to try and photograph and film. What more can you want on a summer's evening? When you're in a big thing, it's kind of in your world, but when you're in a tiny thing, you are just basically allowing yourself to tumble into a smaller, tinier world that's beneath your feet all the time. There's so much going on that you just don't even know about. And then you just stop and, and 
a lot of the time literally hold your breath when you're looking at something it's just lovely you sort of wake up and you, you like come from the photographic mist that's been enveloping you and wake up and slowly like you start hearing all the stuff that's been around you again it's fantastic i think i think that sums it up pretty pretty nicely it's a good note to finish today on Though the previous two days spent at Trubus Hill were by no means a waste of time, I wasn't happy that I hadn't managed to exercise any kind of creative muscle, and so I returned one last time. Sadly, despite it now being dry enough, it was a bit late in the year at this point to have any hope left of finding active bee wolf wasps, so the exact shot I had been wanting to capture was completely out of the question. However, just because that shot wasn't possible right there and then, it was no excuse not to practice that particular photographic technique that it would have required on something at least marginally comparable. That way, if I ever do come across bee wolf wasps again, I'm far more likely to have the skills and knowledge needed to turn my ideas into photos in the way I imagined. And so, with nothing left to stop me in my tracks, I began my search. What I was looking for was a patch of heather containing plenty of bees, the idea being to create one image out of three separate shots, a technique called multiple exposure. Some of you may be familiar with this as it's commonly seen as a bit of a cliche, possibly because it's so often done to a near perfect extent by editing together carefully selected images after a shoot. However, it can actually be done in camera away from a computer by layering together consecutive images. To me, this is far more exciting and something that I think not only holds a lot of untapped creative potential within photography, but also adds an extra degree of skill and imperfection, which I believe could pull the technique away from its preconceptions. So what was the plan? Simple. Well, on paper at least. Take three consecutive photos of bees with tiny depths of field, one rather small on the right hand side of the frame, another a bit bigger in the middle of the frame, and the biggest to the left all without missing focus or misframing and without being able to check if it was working before seeing the final image itself. Perhaps understandably, this was going to involve a lot of trial and error. First day trying, it's a photo I'm pretty happy with. It's not perfect, but then again, that's kind of the point. If you enjoyed this video, then please do share it with friends or perhaps consider subscribing and turning on those notifications. As always, a special thanks to my patrons for supporting these videos and helping to make them possible. Thank you for watching and I hopefully see you again next time.